am Daz. A uh, blank bench. Uh, not repairing anything. I've taken the stuff I'm repairing off the bench. I'm going to look at something else tonight. Um, I'm curious to find out what a modern radio is like. I saw this in the local supermarket. It was £13 and very naughtily it went home with me. It looks um, it's an analog radio and it looks like it might be a phase lock loop radio I'm not sure yet as it has presets um, it's mains or battery powered 20 FM presets and 20 AM presets and 3D cells for battery operation so let's see if we can get inside it so the radio is smaller than the box suggests it is. Oh, and it's all gone halfway across the floor. Cardboard, very environmentally friendly. An instruction manual. The radio itself. And a power supply. Ah, which actually feels like it might be a linear power supply. <laughs> Got some weight to it. Six volts AC at 0.4 amperes, 2.4 watts. The radio itself feels very light. I've got to try and get into it. See if I can. There we go. The usual warning of not to give it to any children. So here's the radio itself. Um, battery compartment, the front of it, sockets AC 6 volts in, that's unusual for that to have um, an AC input, um, there is headphone sockets, there's a carrying handle, and right so looks like a relatively clear manual your shortwave radio, really? <laughs> Didn't know it had shortwave in it. Um, so, about a three inch speaker. Interesting, a main symbol. It's come up on the LCD as soon as I've plugged it into the mains. Oh, all right, power, well that's simple enough. And it comes onto the FM band. Oh, I see. Right. Volume. That's tune. Okay. I am. Um, yep. So, is it step in nine kilohertz steps? It does indeed. Hold the memory down, and it will tune at the stations. Oh, there it goes. Looks like it's got Radio Caroline. Press the preset button and then that seems to put the memories on. Okay, let's uh, stick it on FM and uh, give it a scan, hmm, quite a short aerial, um, I must say, it's not particularly long. Oh, signal meters reading less on this one, right. Let's ask it to scan, see what happens. Oh, that looks right. Three sets of modes on. And it's failed to get radio two. It's got radio four, radio three. Heart. Radio one. Nothing. Classic. Radio local. RVWS. Radio Suffolk. 
and kiss. Just wondering um, how well it gets saturated means I've got a station about two miles away so let's just see. That's 12.51 my station so it's not picking it up there but it is there. So it does get slightly saturated at 9 kilohertz either side. Notice something. Can you hear that? There's a whine on low volumes. Hmm, that's not so good. Does it do it on FM? Yes, yeah, a little bit of a whine there. That's not so good. Just looking for my uh, FM transmitter at the moment. Um, see if it finds it. It might, it might not. Yes, it has. Okay. Well, I must admit it doesn't sound that bad. I am still mystified by that slight whining noise I can hear, but if you were a few feet from the radio, I don't suppose you'd hear it. But uh, the reproduction's okay. It's not hi fi, is it? But... Well, with the volume up to sort of more of a listening volume, the noise isn't quite as noticeable. But there's another feature I didn't realise. If you look at the symbol, that would say to me stereo, and in fact it is. It's actually stereo FM on the headphones. Now that's that has surprised me. So I didn't realise it had stereo FM. Wow, um, that's quite a surprise. I think we've put some batteries in to see <coughs> if medium wave is less interference prone when there's not a mains adapter plugged into it. Very chunky batteries. <sighs> D-cells, yeah that seems to fit okay. Right. Yeah, a little bit less interference. Oh, battery indicator as well. Not sure about the signal indicator on AM. It seems to be indicating all the time. Hmm. Well, under normal listening on AM, I can't really hear the the uh, noise from the amplifier at all so uh, that's not so bad well I thought we'd see how much current this radio draws um, I just sort of wondered um, it does have a standby current which looks like it's a hundred and sixty microamps which I suppose isn't that high when you consider these are D what about when it's powered up the volume low Let's turn that down before I get a copyright hit. Uh, about 60 milliamps AM. Pretty similar. That's, that's quite a high current consumption, I guess, if we consider a, an all analog radio would probably be probably 20 odd milliamps. That's quite a high, uh, high, quite high current. Hence the D batteries, I guess. Notice it's got some felt pads, well, screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six screws to get into it. Hmm. <coughs> I think it's time to take it to bits and see what makes it tick. Oh, they all look the same size screws. So can I get it apart because of these pads or do I have to pull the pads off? Ooh. Ooh, there we go. Wow. Surface mount. Hmm. Well, I can see three ICs. I can see a crystal. I guess that's the phase lock loop. 8 ohm at 3 watts. That ferret rod is quite a disappointing size, but nevertheless, it's quite sensitive on AM, but that's quite small. That is a large, quite a large speaker. And a fair sized magnet. So, well. Interesting, I've had a quick look to see if I can find data sheets and I have been able to. So, 
it looks like the AC comes in and it looks like there's a bridge rectifier and a voltage regulator and I get this, there's a smoothing capacitor under there. So that's how the AC is converted to DC. There's quite a few diodes here, I wonder if they're used to steer the voltages from the battery etc. Um, down here um, near the AC input jack but I uh, can't see where the speaker lead goes. Oh here it is, it goes along here, here up to this chip here. This is an LM4863 which is a dual um, <coughs> a dual bridge amplifier but it can drive headphones as well single-endedly from the same amplifier by automatically switching over. It's amazing what these amplifier chips do these days. So basically that can drive stereo headphones, hence why stereo FM, and it can uh, also drive a pair of speakers. I've worked out 8 ohms, 4.5 volts is about a watt. So that's what we get. I guess it's only using one half to drive one speaker. Um, moving up, this is the clever bit. This is a uh, C9631, a single chip radio. Digital signal processing. So it's got a mixer and a synthesizer in it and it converts the um, FM and AM down to a low IF and then bungs it into analog to digital converters, then to a digital signal processor and then converts it uh, back to um, analog again. My goodness, just look at it. It's just a tiny little chip. And it does all that digital signal processing. And how much did that cost a few years ago? That's really amazing, isn't it? So, it's probably got high impedance input, hence only two wires on the ferret rod. I notice the data sheet doesn't show an aerial amplifier, but there appears to be a couple of transistors here um, where the FM aerial comes in. So, that's um, interesting. So, perhaps that's a wide band amp of some sort, or a buffer or something for the FM uh, aerial. And this um, is a single chip microprocessor, um, if I got it right, an 8051 with LCD driver. So I guess that does the control of the synthesizer in this chip, does the display, reads the buttons, and does all that. And there's a 32 kilohertz, I presume, looking at it crystal, I guess that's driving both. I can't see another crystal for this one um, to enable that so yeah quite boring really so here's the block diagram so there's the mixers and there's your ADCs so the digital signal processing does a um, multiplex decoder as well giving you your stereo that's amazing really how that's done just looking at how the amplifier works as a control pin which goes into it, which enables you to shut down the bridge amplifier and turn it into single-ended. All built into the amplifier chip, quite amazing really. Notice there's a few decoupling capacitors around the uh, rectifier, I guess that's to reduce modulation hum. Means this is an AC input. That does look like a 5 volt regulator anyway. Um, I just thought I'd give an even better close-up. There's the amplifier chip. I'm looking at the speaker. Yeah, because this is a bridge, you don't need a capacitor output. I there's a plug on there so you can take it out. I don't suppose there's much um, good reason for me to take this board out because I guess there's just a smoothing capacitor behind there and buttons. If I take it apart, all the buttons will probably fall out. So yeah, for 13 quid, it's uh, got quite a bit of amazing technology in it really, I guess. But so has everything these days. <laughs> Next time I'm poking in a vintage radio, I'll have to try and remember how simple it is. Anyway, so what do I think? Well, apart from the digital noise when it's at low volume, it's actually quite a good performer, considering it's got no IFs in it. Um, works down to 3 volts. Um, actually got it down to 2.7. Um, and it's still functioning. The low battery indicates the three volts. So, a little bit of maths. I reckon if you had it on low, lowish volume, I reckon you'd get over 120 hours out of a set of D cells with it, assuming about 12 ampere hour on a set of alkaline. So yeah, it is what it is. It's cheap. It even comes with a mains adapter. Um, 13 quid. Well, it's a pretty good effort to be honest. It doesn't sound too tinny. So yeah, that's a modern radio. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.